So you decided you'd like to get stronger and you found Brussels Barbell and the first thing you see is that everybody in this gym squats and we squat correctly. Today I'm gonna to show you how we teach an absolute beginner how to squat from the first day they walk into the door. Gabby's gonna help me out today. Let's get to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is have Gabby step up onto the platform. I'm gonna have her assume a stance where her heels are roughly shoulder width apart. So go ahead and do that for me. A little wider than that, just a shade, good. Now from here, I'm gonna have her rotate her toes out about 30 degrees, turn her toes out 30 degrees, good. This is gonna facilitate the bottom position of the squat and to use as much muscle mass as we can. Now, I'm gonna have Gabby put her hands together as if she's gonna pray. Good, I'm gonna have her squat down, not quite yet, by reaching her hips back, bending over, and putting her elbows on the insides of her knees and just kind of hanging out there at the bottom. Go ahead, squat down, exactly like that. Good, now take your elbows and shove your knees out. Good, this is how Gabby's gonna look at the bottom of the squat. You'll notice that the crease of the hip is just below the top of the patella. Her hamstrings are loaded, the femurs are out in line with the toes. Her back angle, a little more bent over, is more horizontal, bent over, her hip angle is closed and her knee angle is open. Now from here, it's important that she learns how to come up out of the bottom. This is the thing we call hip drive. When Gabby stands up, I don't want her to think about her knees or her quads or pushing the floor down. I want her to think about shoving her sacrum or her tailbone right up. Go ahead and do that for me. Stand up, exactly like that, good. The squat comes from the hips. We're talking about hips, we're talking about the low back, the glutes, the adductors, and the hamstrings. This is the stuff that powers the squat out of the bottom. The quads are involved because the knees are bending, but I want her to think about shoving up her hips. Now that Gabby knows what the bottom position feels like, it's important for her to realize or understand how to drive her hips out of the bottom with some resistance, but more importantly right now, I want her to know where she needs to look on the floor and what her neck position needs to be like. So go ahead and Gabby squat down to the bottom again, reach your hips back, a little deeper than that, shove your knees out, good. Now she's done this once or twice. I want her to lift her head up just a little bit and look at a spot on the floor, I don't know, like a meter and a half away, six, six or so feet away, something like that. This does a couple things for us. It keeps our chest down, which is really important when you squat, but it also maintains a neutral cervical spine in line with the thoracic and lumbar spine. We want her back all the way through neutral. Now I'll show later, when she lifts her head up, this kills the squat. Come on for the bottom, don't, don't get too tired. Looking down provides a spot on the floor that's closer to us than the ceiling, provides proprioceptive feedback, and is way easier for balance when you're driving your hips out of the bottom. All that look up to go up nonsense, throw it away. We're gonna learn how to do this right. So go ahead and squat again. Eyes on the floor, a little deeper than that to here. Now I'm gonna block Gabby's hips and I'm gonna teach her how to drive against my hands, push against her hands, stand up, stand up, stand up, exactly like that. I'm not trying to force, force her down, overdo it. Go ahead one more time. Look at the floor, drive it up, push, 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 push. And just for demonstration purposes, watch what happens when I get her to lift her head. Go ahead and squat one more time without getting too tired. Push your knees out of the way. Now look up like everyone else, look at the ceiling and push. Push, good. So I've literally applied less pressure than I did before. Pulling the head kills the hips. The chest comes, when the head comes up, the chest comes forward, the hips come slightly forward and it kills the hips out of the bottom. The squat will stop this way. So look at the floor and learn to drive your hips up. So now that we've taught the squat from the ground up without the barbell, let's add the bar. First step, where do we put this thing? So I'm gonna have Gabby take her right hand, reach across her left shoulder, go ahead for me, and feel for a bony ridge, which for her is right here. This is the spine of the scapula. Now, this actually isn't the space we're looking for. I want her to trace it to the side and it's gonna come to a point on the top of her shoulder, right here, right there, there you go. That's basically where the seam of her shirt's gonna be. That's gonna be the top of the spine of the scapula. And this point just below here is where the barbell's gonna sit. So when she contracts her shoulders back, that bar's gonna sit on the muscles of the posterior delts. Now for the grip, this will be different than what some of you are accustomed to. I'm gonna have Gabby take a grip on the barbell with a thumbs on top or a thumbless grip. Go ahead and put that on the barbell. And the reason for this is not that thumbs around are a deal breaker, it's not the case at all. But when she's first learning how to do this, I want her to understand that the bar sits on the back and not on the hands. 
Humans are real handsy. We like to feel things and touch things with our hands. As soon as most people wrap that thumb around, they tend to bear some of that weight in their hands. And I don't want her to feel anything in her hands today. I want it to sit on her back so she understands this is the position the bar needs to be in. So with neutral wrists, straight wrists, not an extension, not inflection, which is even worse, rolling over forward, good. I want her to keep neutral wrists and have her come underneath the barbell by squeezing her shoulder blades, finding that bony landmark we just identified a minute ago, and place the bar just underneath that, which is exactly here. Perfect. Get both feet underneath you, brace yourself, take a big breath and stand up. Good, two steps back. Now Gabby's cleared the rack and she's ready to squat. She's assumed her stance, which is correct. Bars in the correct position, wrists are neutral, forearms loaded. I want her to take a big breath and squat. Before that, there's two things that are different. She doesn't have her elbow to push her knees out. She has to do that with her brain now. And the second thing is that when she gets to the bottom, I'm just gonna have her bounce and stand right back up instead of staying down there. So take a big breath, bend way over, reach your butt back, drive your hips and squat. Just exactly like that, good. Take a big breath and hold, squat, Drive your hips up, good. Do one more, big breath, reach, bounce, good. Walk it in, put it away, excellent. So there you go. This is how we teach the squat of Brussels barbell. I'm gonna have Gabby go ahead and just do a set of five. Now the important thing to know is that everybody starts somewhere different on day one. Maybe the empty bar is all she can squat on day one and that's it and that's fine. That's her starting point. The important thing to know is that there is a weight at which everybody can start to begin your journey towards getting stronger every time. Every time Gabby shows up, she's gonna add a little bit more weight, she's gonna squat again until we can't do it in a linear fashion anymore, then we started getting fun with it.